How happy are you, Anna? <laughs> Anna, they, they want to learn that matrix, Anna. Hey guys, so I'm going to be back in Sweden soon, but I just wanted to share a clip from my last seminar. I overview the matrix and a lot of common mistakes people make, as well as how to combine it with a strong ankle lock and a strong transition to the back. Hope you guys like the video. Also guys, if you like the content, be sure to like, share, subscribe to help support the channel. <laughs> the matrix is not a guard, right? It's not like you can go in and go to the matrix guard and play from there, right? It's an attack. So it's like analogous to like a triangle choke. You can set up a triangle choke from collar sleeve, from spider guard, from closed guard. Matrix is like that, right? It's an attack you set up. So we're just gonna start off. The way we're gonna do this is just imagine that you have like X guard or something, okay? So I have an underhook on his leg and I have kind of X guard with my foot on the near side hip. <coughs> Somehow he just does a little back step. So he backs up a little bit like this, right? So when he back steps, this is like a really easy situation to throw the matrix. So the first thing that's most important, I always need his toes pointed in the same direction of my hips, right? Because I'm gonna be throwing my right leg behind his leg here. If his toes are pointed really far out this way, there's no way for me to buckle him inward, so it's gonna get stuck. So we always need the toes pointed that way. My left arm, I'm gonna have an underhook on his leg. I like to grab the calf material most of the time, but I'm not super deep, okay? I wanna be mobile. So I'm gonna be kind of shallow here like this, right? So all I'm gonna do, I have this X position. I'm gonna take my right leg, and I throw it behind his knee here. I like to kind of be out and on my side a little bit. It makes it easier to uh, throw the leg over. Um, and a bit common question is people always worried about hurting their knee here, which is reasonable because I've seen a lot of people do that. Uh, you shouldn't be pressuring this way because that's gonna put pressure on your knee. It should be your heel, and this is easier when you're on your side, cutting down, you see? So it's like this straight motion here. If you're flat, then you're gonna be pressuring this way and it's gonna be harder on your knee. Right? So when I'm throwing a matrix, you see I'm out on my side here and I catch my heel like this. In this position, it's not hard on my knee at all. So I wanna use my left leg to clip the far hip. I don't always have to do this, but I do it when I can because it buys me time. It makes it harder for him to follow me and step forward. You see, what he would like here is to follow me like this. Right? So when I clip here, that makes that harder. Now I'm gonna come up and grab his hip. When I grab the hip, Right, I wanna grab as far around as I can, okay? Because once I get the hip, now I can start to shrimp out, and this makes it, if he tries to circle to follow me, this, this pulls me around. It makes it easy to come around there, okay? So if you just imagine, right, just uh, face that way. Like if I'm holding the far hip here and he turns to his right, it's just keeping me attached. I'm just like holding, you know, it would be like if I just did this and I just said turn to your right, it's like, you can't follow it, right? So we're here, right? I hop up and throw. Okay, if you feel like you're a little out of position, you can try to hop and get yourself in position. But again, I'm on my side and I hit that position there. Right, when I catch this, I come up and grab the hip. From here, I put my left foot on the floor. I'm gonna strip my hip out as far as I can, release the underhook, and now I pull and drive my heel down and it's really easy to slide around behind. All right, so a lot of you guys are kind of having a hard time sometimes grabbing the hip here when you go for the matrix, right? So one big reason for this is you need to make sure you get on your side when you throw this. If you're flat here, even if I'm here, I just don't have the movement to go for that, right? So when I get on my side here like this, and especially when I go shallow with this heel, this gives me the, the uh, support to kind of lift myself up to grab the hip. And because I'm on my side, my right shoulder is higher in the air and it's closer. If I'm flat on my back, it's very hard to reach the hip. Right? I can even, if like even if he was really tall or I was short and he was really tall, like the upper lower, look, I can really pop up. I can lift my hip off the floor and grab this and get a good grip on the hip. Okay, so this is another finish variation. So the first one I showed was I was on the ground, it was easy to get. I shrimp out and finish. So now it's a little harder to reach. So he stands up tall. So I have to pop up on my shoulder. The way I do that is I use my right heel behind his knee. My left leg clipping here helps and you see I can uh, put my weight up on my left shoulder here. Now I can grab the hip. When I'm up like this, I don't even need to shrimp out. I just release the underhook, pull through, and now I can go for the back from here. But it's possible that you cannot reach the hip. If that's the case, I usually don't do it this way. I would just opt to do a different attack, right? But if it is the case, right, then when you throw, you can try to bring them down. I just think it is a little risky 
because sometimes people put their weight down and they can put pressure on your knee. If you use your arms for support, then I can try to pull down more like this. Here, the hip is more available. The only thing with this style is you're more entangled. Right, you see how like I'm kind of stuck, I take that. So now I really gotta shrimp out first to start trying to come around, okay? So it adds an extra layer in there that you have to deal with. My preference is the one I showed you guys because it's fast. Most of the time you can get that. Um, if, if I couldn't reach it, right, because he was just like way taller, like mega postured up or something, you can always try to go under here and now I can start bringing him forward. And from here I can attack ankle locks and other stuff. But there, he just exposed this and now I can go around there. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. <laughs> Um, but it's just important to mention, like if there is, I mean, I think it doesn't have, like it has to be a lot of height difference. Like if you have someone's like six foot six and someone's like five ten or something like, or five eight, or you know, it, there's a point where it becomes hard. So just keep that in mind. So if you feel like the height difference is just way, way, way too much, then you can try to break them down more or you can try to transition to something else, okay? So let's talk about what to do if their foot is turned out a little bit. So go up. So one thing that will happen sometimes, I start to throw the matrix or I go to the position where I would throw the matrix and what happens is they turn their foot out more, okay? So when it's out, I'm not gonna continue trying to chase this. You're, that's, you're really likely to hurt your knee and try to force it. So when that happens, I just take this leg, I butterfly hook their other leg, okay? And once I butterfly hook the other leg, I just pull myself under and I have two main options here. I'll either just straight ankle sweep them back here, and then from here we can start going into ankle locks and crab ride, which we'll do in a little bit. Come back up. Or, once I go here, if the weight's a little more forward, I just block their shin with my palm, I lift with my feet, and he'll have to post his hands out here, and then now I can start building from here, and this will turn into ankle lock, crab ride, matrix, and stuff like that, okay? So I'm not gonna go into that yet, I will soon. I just want you guys to see the option. If you feel like throwing the leg over time, just butterfly hook and go under. That's the hard thing with teaching a technique uh, as opposed to a position. Techniques are only relevant in a specific situation, right? So you have to take what's available, not what you want. So if you guys do a matrix seminar, you're gonna be all excited about the matrix. You may go into rolling and then I'm gonna do the matrix. And then when you don't get the matrix, you start feeling like you did something wrong, but it may be that it was never available. Like I could roll with a white belt today and you guys just did the matrix seminar and you're like, oh, I wanna see John do a white belt. I might roll with a white belt and it's never relevant. In the whole role, it never really was relevant for me to do a matrix. And if I tried to do it, it would be me trying to force it when it's not there, and it would make the whole role unnatural, right? I may roll with a world-class black belt and get two matrixes because of how they're responding. I don't really get to control that. So you, you need to understand the mechanics of how it works and why it works, but then try to take it when it's available, not when you want, right? So if you did this seminar and you didn't pay attention to this foot placement thing, you might go into rolling and be trying to, to spam that matrix and his foot's turned out and it just won't work. So that's why you need the relevancy of the other techniques, right? Right, we just threw over, we didn't get that. We butterfly hook, we come under. Make sure, I should be on my side initially, right? So I'm trying to throw here, whatever. The momentum of going on my side to flat creates a lot of the off balance. If I'm flat in the beginning like this, then when I go here, I just don't have any movement, right? When I'm on my side like this and I go here, I get that huge jump under and it's very easy to start creating the off balance, okay? Once I off balance him, I don't know what he's gonna do. I have to adapt to what he does, okay? In the situation that we're in right here, I can throw a matrix really easily from here. Um, let's just start with, I bump him forward and he's gonna put his knee on the floor, okay? So once his knee's on the floor here, I'm gonna take my right hand and come up and grab this pant leg, all right? If I had knocked him straight back, I could do the same thing, right? I come up and I grab this pant leg. From here, we're gonna go for an ankle lock or a matrix. So once I get this underneath position, I get this cross grip. I'm gonna lift this up, okay? And I'm gonna go for an ankle lock. So the main thing I want for the ankle lock, I wanna lift this foot high into my armpit and I cut through really deep. And I wanna lock his foot on my chest like this, okay? And I wanna lock it as high as I can. Okay, this is the ankle lock that uh, Victor Hugo did to Ali, which is definitely a heel hook. I think it should, I think it should be allowed, but it's definitely a heel hook. Okay? okay, so it goes really high, and I cut in tight like this. And I lock it tight on my elbow, I grab high on my lapel. Notice I keep this position here because it stops his knee from moving, and this pant leg gives, him, gives me the ability to control this, right? So 
I can lock up really high there, right? Now I can come, I like to take my left foot across, put this on the hip, and get a really nasty finish there. It's basically a heel hook, right? So I go there, rotate that way, and then if he falls down, I can follow it over. That's gonna be really bad. So again, I can't take what I want, right? So what might happen is as I bump him forward here and I start to go for this, he turns his foot in a bunch, right? Here, now that exposes the matrix. Okay, you understand? So the, when he defends the foot lock a lot by turning his foot inward, then he's gonna give me the matrix. If he keeps his foot straight, then it's easier to start setting up the foot lock, right? And then I can start hitting there really easy, right? So those two go together, right? So anytime I do this like four bump stuff, even if he just initially landed here like this, if this foot's inward, I can always come back to the matrix there. You see that? So understanding the direction of the foot is what's gonna show me what I can do, right? So um, if you guys wanna work the ankle lock, I think the easiest way to start with it is to just start in the uh, <coughs> um, butt scoop. So just imagine I just got the X bar and I just knocked him down, okay? So he's just sitting on his butt here. This is a good way to practice it if you're new to it. I hold the pant leg, okay? I keep this left foot under, and I keep my knee here strong so he can't like turn his foot out a bunch, right? His leg's kind of isolated. Right hand cross pant grips to control. See, I lift this really high up in my armpit as much as I can, and then I lock it in tight, and I want to keep it high. Because when it's high, I get a lot more force in there, okay? I can still do it here, but it's just a lot less force. When I lock it up really high up there on my chest, now I can really get a ton of force there, okay? And like I said, you can do it like a heel hook if you want. When I go that way, it hits in there, right? If he turns his foot in a little bit, it actually, I can just go on the outside now, there, right? Okay, so just play around with the mechanics of controlling this uh, and just understand how it fits in with the matrix, okay? I cover a lot in seminars, I know, so it's a ton of techniques. I don't expect you guys to be able to remember everything, most important is you guys understand how the things connect because you can fill in the details later, but I want you to understand the idea that if you're going for an ankle lock, they're probably going to turn their foot in. Then there's a matrix. If you can't do the matrix because their foot's turned out, then it's a little easier to go for the ankle lock. If you identify that pattern, you can fill in a lot of the gaps yourself. All right? All right, guys, one, two, three.